Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time The tone was cordial, and it looked like a thaw in the brewing Cold War between the U.S. and China. Then after the summit, President Biden called Chinese President Xi a dictator, and China vowed to retake Taiwan. The summit began with the two leaders taking a much friendlier tone after months of rising tensions, with President Biden sounding optimistic. I believe they're some of the most constructive and productive discussions we've had. They agreed on a new push to crack down on the export of the deadly drug fentanyl from China to the U.S. President Xi Jinping said China is ready to be a partner and friend of the United States. And China could use a friend. Foreign businesses and capital have been fleeing China at a record pace. Companies are increasingly seeing the writing on the wall in China. The environment is no longer... Uh, conducive to open business, going from 100 billion in foreign direct investment to negative 11 billion um, over the last seven quarters is, is just remarkable. The two leaders also agreed to resume military to military communications after they were cut off last year following then House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's trip to Taiwan. Biden and Xi even took this stroll together through a garden at the summit site. There's no more important bilateral relationship on earth. My main concern is that this not head towards actual physical violence. And there are ways that it could because of all the tensions between the two sides, the kind of criticisms, the kind of names each side is using sometimes to describe the other. Those tensions erupted again when Biden asked whether he trust President Xi quoted Ronald Reagan. I trust but verify, as that old saying goes. My responsibility is to, uh, to make, it, uh, make this rational and manageable. So it, uh, so it doesn't result in conflict. Things got hotter when a reporter asked the president if he would still refer to Xi as a dictator. Well, look, he is. I mean, he's a dictator in the sense that he, he is a guy who runs a country that is a communist country that based on a former government totally different than ours. Watch Antony Blinken get visibly shaken when Biden calls Z a dictator. President, after today, would you still refer to President Xi as a dictator? This is a term uh, that we used earlier this year. Well, look, he is. I mean, he's a dictator in the sense that he, he is a guy who runs a country that is a communist country that based on a former government totally different than ours. The Chinese government responded swiftly and forcefully, calling the dictator label extremely wrong and vowing China would be unstoppable in eventually retaking Taiwan something President Biden has vowed to stand against. Moving on to Russia, Moscow's rocket forces loaded an intercontinental ballistic missile into a launch silo in southern Russia. This ICBM, however, is no ordinary weapon. It is equipped with a nuclear-capable avant-garde hypersonic glide vehicle. The missile was transported to a launch silo in Orenburg region near Kazakhstan, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced the development of this weapon back in 2018. It was in response to a new generation of weapons introduced by the United States and developed as a counter to the United States missile defense system. Russia installed its first avant-garde equipped missile in 2019 at the same Orenburg facility. But how does this missile exactly work? Well, as soon as the missile approaches its target, 
the avant-garde glide vehicle detaches from the rocket. It is then maneuvered outside the trajectory of the rocket at supersonic speed. That means it can travel up to 27 times the speed of sound towards its target. Such missiles are thus harder for missile defenses to intercept. The development comes at a time when the world is witnessing a steady disintegration of arms control treaties signed by nuclear powers to reduce the arms race triggered by the Cold War. But now Russia, U.S. and China are developing a new range of weapons without checks. The hypersonic weapons serves to only increase the fears of nuclear warfare. It seems as though we are on the verge of World War III. Jesus told us in the last days there would be war between the nations. Are we seeing the stage setting taking place to fulfill this prophecy? If so, then we're close to the time Jesus refers to as the worst time in the history of the world as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. If we are that close to the tribulation, then the world is about to see war the likes of this planet has never seen before. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, war will be unleashed. Resulting from these wars will be famine, pestilence, and death as Jesus breaks the third and fourth seals. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. We begin this half hour in Israel apparently preparing to launch more attacks, this time in southern Gaza, after saying it is taking control of northern Gaza. That move comes after Israeli forces moved into the largest hospital in Gaza, but there are questions as to just how much Hamas was actually using the facility as a terror base. And the Israeli military attacked the home in Gaza of a Hamas leader who now lives out of the country. CBN's Chris Mitchell brings us this look at all these events and the impact of Israel's war on Hamas with its Middle East neighbors. Here's his report now from Jerusalem. As day 41 in the war between Israel and Hamas unfolds, the Israel Defense Forces say its fighter jet struck Ismail Haniyeh's residence overnight, saying it was used as terrorist infrastructure to direct attacks against Israel. Haniya was last seen earlier this month in a video supposedly taken in Qatar. Israel has also taken over an area known as the Shati camp in Gaza, which it says was a key Hamas stronghold. The IDF said its troops struck terrorists and located weapons, including explosive belts, explosive barrels, RPGs, and anti-tank missiles. We continue to operate deep inside Gaza City in the heart of the terror capital. We are in the depths of the Shadi camp, which we are now in control of. Our forces killed many terrorists here, captured many, and destroyed much terror infrastructure. Meanwhile, Israeli forces are still inside Gaza Shifa Hospital, Amid questions over whether there was actually a major Hamas center located in the building, IDF spokesman Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conriquez presented the findings of the IDF from within the hospital's MRI center. And a few of the most interesting things that we have found totally confirm, without any doubt, that Hamas systematically uses hospitals in their military operations in violation of international law. He pointed out that all the security cameras had been covered and an MRI machine, a grab-and-go bag of a Hamas combatant. What you will be able to see are is military equipment. There is a an AK-47, there are cartridges, am ammo, uh, there are uh, grenades in here, of course, uniform, and all of that. this was hidden very conveniently, secretly, behind the MRI machine. He also debunked reports that the hospital was running out of supplies. As you can see, the rest of the equipment here is proper hospital equipment, right? Bandages and medical gear. Uh, it seems as if there's no real shortage. In the main hallway, more weapons in a cabinet. 
These weapons have absolutely no business being inside a hospital. As Israelis continue to press for the release of 240 hostages, Hamas has reportedly agreed to a deal to free at least 50 women and children in exchange for a multi-day pause in fighting, an increase in humanitarian aid, and freedom for a number of Palestinian prisoners. Meanwhile, the IDF military campaign is getting mixed reviews from Israel's neighbors in the region. In Turkey, President Recep Erdogan keeps increasing his condemnation. Israel is implementing a strategy of total destruction of a city and its people. It is literally carrying out state terrorism with a brutality that deliberately bombs civilians on the road after forcing them to leave their homes. And I now, my heart is at ease. I say openly that Israel is a terrorist state. Erdogan describes Hamas as resistance fighters and wants to see Israel's political and military leaders tried for war crimes. On the other end of the spectrum, the UAE, a charter member of the Abraham Accords, stated clear support for the Jewish state. Ali al Nuemi, the head of the Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee in the UAE Parliament said, from the United Arab Emirates perspective, the Abraham Accords are there to stay. We want everyone to acknowledge and accept that Israel is there to exist. Going further, Nuami said Israel is part of our history and should be part of our future. Many observers believe the move toward adding Saudi Arabia to the Abraham Accords could have been one motivation behind the October 7th terror attack. While the recent Arab summit in Riyadh condemned Israel's military operation, it stopped short of any economic or political punishment through the efforts of Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Given the need to rebuild Gaza when fighting stops, the two nations could be key post-war partners. The UN Security Council passed a resolution calling for urgent and extended humanitarian pauses in corridors throughout the Gaza Strip to allow for aid delivery and medical evacuations. The U.S. abstained, allowing the resolution to pass while Israel's ambassador to the UN, Gilad Erdan, condemned the resolution, resolution since it didn't mention the atrocities by Hamas on October 7th. With so much attention on Hamas in Gaza and Hezbollah in Lebanon, international talk is growing on what's happening behind the scenes. The main master plan, the main person who's pulling all the strings is Iran. They are the threat to Israel for the next three years, five years, 25 years. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. I made it clear to the Israelis that um, to Bibi and to his war cabinet, that I think the only ultimate answer here is a two-state solution that's real. We got to get to the point where there is an ability to be able to even talk without worrying about whether or not we're just dealing with, uh, they're dealing with Hamas is going to engage in the same activities they did over the past, uh, on, on the 7th. So it, it's, uh, but I can't tell, I'm not a fortune teller, I can't tell you how long it's going to last. But I can tell you, I don't think it ultimately ends until there's a two-state solution. I made it clear to the Israelis, I think it's a big mistake to, for them to think they're going to occupy Gaza and maintain Gaza. I don't think that works. And so, we're gonna, I think you're going to see efforts to, uh, Bring along, well, I shouldn't go into anymore because that's been things I've been negotiating with Arab countries and others about what the next steps are. God gives the most dire warning to the nations who would divide up his land, as we read in Joel 3, 1 and 2, and Zechariah 12, 8 and 9. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there, on account of my people, my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them, in that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. It shall be in that day 
that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. I want to talk about something now that few here in the United States are discussing. And that is outrageous comments about Israel and the U.S. from a key NATO ally and recipient of hundreds of millions of dollars in U.S. aid this year. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan today giving Hamas exactly what it wants after initiating the terror attack in Israel in an angry, unhinged speech, Erdogan calling Israel a terror state and Hamas a legitimate political party. Hey, Israel, you have an atom bomb, a nuclear bomb, and you are threatening with this. We know these, and your time of death is now coming. No matter whether you own a nuclear bomb, own whatever you own, but you are a goner. And right now, I'm openly saying with a clear conscience that Israel is a terror state. Your time of death is now coming. Everyone clapping there. Since last year, Israel and Turkey have had full diplomatic relations. So now Hamas is getting exactly what it wants. It did something horrible, something heinous, and they're succeeding in getting Israel blamed. Never mind that Hamas leaders have literally given interviews saying that was their goal. Hamas official telling the New York Times last week, quote, I hope that the state of war with Israel will become permanent on all the borders and that the Arab world will stand with us. We can't expect anything less from Hamas. What we can expect more from are our NATO allies who come to us when they need something like money and lots of it, but support the terrorists when we need them. He also went on to criticize the United States. You describe Hamas as a terrorist organization. Hamas is a political party that entered elections in Palestine and won the election. And after it won the election, you took away its rights. Who took them away? Again, Israel and America took them away together. The puzzle pieces are falling rapidly into place concerning a prophecy concerning Russia, Iran and Turkey, known as the War of Gog and Magog, spoken of by the prophet Ezekiel. Turkey is a member of NATO, making them an ally of the United States. But as we can see by recent events, the relationship between the two is falling apart. On top of that, Turkey is jockeying for closer ties with Russia. Ezekiel 38, 1-9 The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords. Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his hordes, Bethgarma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes, many peoples are with you. Be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war the land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you. These are the modern day nations in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that many people believe will be mustered in the latter years to attack Israel. Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, and Ethiopia. God tells us exactly what will happen to Iran, Russia, Turkey, and the many peoples with you when they attack Israel in Ezekiel 38, 18 through 23, and 39 to 7 and 8. And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him into judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. 
Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. I've been informed by top-ranking military officials that Israel has been unable to launch even a single plane in defense. As I stand here, fighter planes are exploding in midair. They're crashing and falling to the ground without any explanation. And while no one can seem to give me any reason for why this is happening, I can tell you this. This all-out, unprecedented attempt to destroy Israel appears to be failing. God is the one who fights this battle for Israel. He does it for two reasons. To make his holy name known in the midst of his people Israel, that the nation shall know that he is the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Zechariah 2, 8, and 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Israel is precious to Almighty God, the apple of his eye. He is simply saying, You touch my chosen nation Israel, you poke me in the eye. Is Vladimir Putin, the infamous Gog of Magog, that the prophet Ezekiel warned would come on the scene in the last days and lead a coalition of nations to destroy Israel? Or could Gog be Recep Tayyip Erdogan, another dictator, who is fast gaining power and dominance in the Middle East? Biblical scholars can't agree if the prophet Ezekiel was talking about a last day's assault on Israel being led by Russia or Turkey. Many popular Bible teachers claim that Gog will come from Russia, while others claim that Ezekiel's prophecy actually points to Turkey. Whether Gog is from Russia or Turkey, both nations are presently being led by undisputed dictators who could each very easily fit the Gog profile. There are also fears this conflict could expand. Iranian-backed rebels in Yemen have been firing missiles at Israel. In the last 24 hours, the U.S. military announced it shot down a drone launched from Yemen that was headed toward an American warship. Holly Williams spoke exclusively with Iran's foreign minister about recent attacks on U.S. forces in the Middle East. The U.S. says fighters backed by Iran have been attacking American forces in the Middle East with drones and rockets for weeks. But Iran's foreign minister, Hussein Amir Abdullahian, told us his country is not responsible and denied any involvement in the drone attack yesterday in the Red Sea. In Yemen, they make their own decisions. So it sounds like you're saying that Iran backs these groups around the Middle East, including the Houthis, including fighters in Iraq and Syria, but you bear no responsibility for what they do. These groups in Iraq and Syria that are attacking US interests have made their own decisions. Iran is also a backer of Hamas, and the US says that makes it complicit in the October 7th attacks on Israel. The foreign minister denied that Iran helped plan them or even had advance warning. They went to capture military fighters. We never support the killing of women and children. You said they went in to target military personnel. Does Iran believe that Hamas may have made a mistake, strategically or morally, by targeting civilians? Hamas exercised a legitimate right to defend itself. It was a response to 75 years of aggression. The US and Iran both say they want to stop the Israel-Hamas war from spreading. But they're old enemies in a Middle East that looks increasingly unstable and dangerously on edge. Up to the rising tensions in the region, U.S. officials say a Navy destroyer traveling in the Red Sea shot down a drone. They say it was fired from Yemen and headed towards the ship. Our chief global affairs anchor, Martha Raddatz, is in Washington with more. A drone fired right towards that U.S. Navy destroyer, and the crew took no chances shooting it out of the sky. We now have two aircraft carrier strike groups in the region to act as a deterrent, but these threats from Iranian-backed groups keep on coming. In late October, the Pentagon says the Houthi militants in Yemen launched four cruise missiles and 15 drones over the Red Sea in the direction of Israel. The U.S. has carny shot all of those down. 
And just last week, the Pentagon says the Houthis shot down a U.S. Reaper drone, one of America's most sophisticated and expensive drones. All of this raising tensions in the region and fears of a wider war. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!
time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.